A remarkable couple of hours of cricket either side of tea on the third day of the LV County Championship match between Essex and Hampshire in Chelmsford saw the visitors first get close to winning only for Graham Napier to smash his side to their first victory of the season with a day to spare. There was nothing to choose between the two sides as day three commenced so perhaps Essex were just shading things when George Bailey was bowled by a beauty from David Masters in the day seventh over. That left Hampshire on 85 for three in their second innings with a slender lead of only 28 in what has been a fairly low scoring contest to date. So each time the informed James Vince struck the ball to the boundary rope, the match was balanced up again. How Hampshire needed him to stick it out for some time. That's exactly what Liam Dawson had done, although he'd hardly played a shot in anger. This a very rare boundary four for him. The important thing as far as he was concerned was that he was still in. He'd started the day on 31, yet it took him more than an hour and a half of the morning to finally get to his 50, which arrived courtesy of an all-run four. It was a fine effort from Dawson, who knew the value of crease occupation, something that became even more important as the day wore on. His 50 here came off 158 balls. But moments later, he was out. Ben Folkes taking his second very smart catch at short leg in this innings. Dawson was gone for 52 with 144 for four. That left Hampshire 87 runs to the good, but after adding just nine more, there were five down as Sean Irvin was bowled off the inside edge by Napier straight after lunch. I mentioned Folkes' skills at short leg a moment ago. It's a fielding position where youngsters generally find themselves, and you can see why. The young are also very agile, of course, and Folks again showed why he's given the spot as he denied Vince more runs here. Vince, though, had made a fine 50 off 96 balls, but having moved to 67, he was the next man out with a regulation edge behind off Masters. Hampshire were now on 188 for six, 131 runs ahead, but they lost half of their wickets in five overs. Vince was swiftly followed by Chris Wood, who was LBW to a nip backer from Ravi Bapara. Masters then removed his former teammate Adam Wheater, who nicked off on 14. David Balcom slashed at Papara and was caught in the gully for two. Before the all-rounder ended the innings in a flash by having James Tomlinson taken behind. In 30 balls, Hampshire had slumped from 188 for five to 199 all out, with a masterful Masters claiming the 25th five-wicket haul of his brilliant career. That sudden collapse before T had left Essex with what appeared to be a simple task of scoring 143 for their first win of the summer. But the doubts that they would do that were soon there as Alistair Cook was bowled by Balcom in spite of what looked to be a good defensive shot. That was not the start Essex would have wanted of course, but few would have expected them to collapse as they did, even against a good attack with a new ball. That ball had very little to do with Tom West's dismissal. Jimmy Adams made a couple of attempts to pick the ball up at mid-wicket, but Rob Quiney ignored the old adage about never running on a misfield, and after some confusion, Wesley was run out for the second time in the match. The impressive and always pumped up Balcom then reduced Essex to 16 for three by having Papara held at slip by Dawson for a third ball duck. The nerves were starting to show when a disappointed looking Quiney was the fourth man out, edging Tomlinson to Wheater in the ninth over. And next ball, Tomlinson struck again. Folks played no shot to a ball which moved back into him, and he was a judge leg before, with his side now in big, big trouble on 24 for five. Surely James Foster, a man with so much experience, would calm things down, but would you believe it? He was run out by the slimmest of margins by George Bailey. In 69 balls, Essex had crumbled to 31 for six and looked dead and buried. But in walked Napier in only the twelfth over, and he produced a stunning counter-attack to finally put his side on top. This was one of his three sixes. His third fifty of what has been a fine season for the all-rounder arrived off 71 balls, and by the time he got there, the runs required were down to a more manageable 38. Napier's 74 in the first innings was the knot which had given his side a decent lead, and he was now finishing this match off in real style. Essex claimed the extra half an hour and in the third over of that, Mark Pettini, who also batted extremely well under some pressure with Napier, clipped Dawson through mid-wicket for the winning runs. The joy from him was understandable. 
a dramatic afternoon had seen this game ebb and flow, but it was Essex who got home to prevent Hampshire from closing the gap on the second division leaders Northamptonshire. Napier ended on a game-changing 78 with Patini on a patient 35 as Essex won by four wickets. They moved off the foot of the table with the win, which earned them 21 points. For Hampshire, this was a real blow. They had to make do with only three points from a game in which for much of this day, they looked the most likely victors.